Hi everyone, I'm Blackie Wolf, and this is the video series where we walk through developing a forum. In the previous episode, we got our development environment set up using XAMPP, or at least I did, and made a few changes to the page loading of the website in order to work for this environment, which more closely resembles an actual web server, which we'll be hosting this on later. In this episode, we're going to go ahead and move off of JavaScript. Uh, I thought I'd have more to talk about, but I really don't. So we're going to go ahead and get into PHP. What we're going to have to do is move all of these files, or at least some of these files, over to PHP. And we're also going to, once again, have to make changes to this page loader, probably. But the way we're going to do this is we're going to be using some standards to make our PHP development a little bit easier. There's this website called phpfig. Um, what does this stand for? Something, uh, yeah, here it is. Framework Interop, PHP Framework Interop Group. It has some recommendations here that we're going to use. Specifically, we're going to be using this auto loading standard. And we're going to go to this examples file. And we're just going to copy this section right here. This is really all we need for right now. So, let's go ahead and create a new file called autoloader.php. Okay, so I'm stupid. Uh, I just completely slipped my mind that I have completely forgot to do that. You gotta put PHP at the top of all these files. So, yeah. Let's see, now let's make this look a little bit better. And I don't care about the comments. You should comment your code though. But I don't feel like it. And I guess, yeah, I guess we can use snake case for this. Uh, n never mind, I'm actually gonna use camel case. Okay, we need to give this a namespace. We're gonna have namespaces for all our classes. What's a good namespace? Uh, I'll just call. Typically, you do it uh, vendor and then product. So I'll use my name. And then the name of the product is my forum. Okay. So there's our auto loader. Next, we want to create a new folder called templates. In this folder, we want to create two new files, one called header.phtml and another called footer.phtml. And the reason I'm giving it a phtml uh, prefix, or sorry, extension, is because it's primarily going to hold HTML, but I might also put PHP in there. And so we're going to take the first half of our file from this and put it into the header, we're going to take the bottom half and put it into the footer file. Okay, and that's been done. Save that. Next, we're going to rename the index file into index.php. We're going to require once the autoloader. And then we're going to uh, include once the header from the templates. Then we're going to include once the footer. And then we're going to see what this looks like just so I can show you. And reload. And it still looks like that because it's still working like that. Okay, so we've successfully put, brought this over to PHP. Now the auto loader is important because in, we're going to use it to actually load our PHP from the source file right here. And you know what? I take that back. I'm just going to call this lib. And from the auto loader, we're going to load the lib file. Okay. Now this is important because this auto loader. You saw how in this index file we required and included all these others. Well, using a using the autoloader, we don't actually have to use the include 
for any of the other when we're using classes. And to give you an example, we'll create a test class and we'll give this a namespace of Blacky Wolf, my vendor, whoop, my forum. class, uh, test class, with a constructor, whoops, which echoes out hi there to the page when it's uh, constructed. So we'll come back here and then we'll do use Blackie Wolf My Forum test class, and then at down here at the bottom, we'll create a new version of the test class. Now let's see what that does to our forum. And it looks like I forgot to change the variable length right here. And you can see it printed out hi there. Um, we didn't have to include that class, or rather, the way we included it was by using the namespace, and then the autoloader actually found the file that it needed to require or include into the page. So, yeah, it works out great doing it that way. So, now we've got this moved over to PHP. Let's see if the JavaScript is still working properly. It might not be. Oh, it is. Excellent. That was one of my concerns was with moving it over. It might not work properly. Let's go ahead and rename these though to PHTML. And then we'll need to come back here into the page loader and make that load PHTML pages. And then we'll see if this is still working. And it looks like it is. Oh, oh ho, look at that. That did not work. Well, let's see what the problem is. Why didn't it work? About works, contact works, forum works, thread one works, thread two works. Okay, so yeah, I don't know why it didn't work. It might have been a caching issue. Oh well. Hmm, interesting. Okay, well, now we've got everything moved over to HTML. What is that, a favicon? Uh-oh, look at that. Throttling history state changes to prevent the browser from hanging. Ooh. That's not good. Okay, we got to figure out why uh, history state. And I believe, I thought, I thought we fixed this. Apparently not. So this pop state is going to change every time. And I think I might, I believe it's this enable links. Uh-oh, that's a problem. Ah, yeah, that wouldn't, whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Okay, so we forgot to change that from HTML to PHP. Let's see what happens now. And I believe it also fixed our issue. Okay, and that also fixed the issue with the, um, no it didn't. Okay, we're gonna change this a little bit. I'm gonna get rid of enable links. And whenever the DOM content loads, document, or rather, no, not when it loads. We're going to add an event to the document. And we're going to say whenever the document is clicked, then we want to run, well, part of this. We're going to have to change it a little bit. Okay, we're going to say every time the doc the document is clicked, um, if the event target was a link, then we're going to try and load the page. And I'm going to change this a little bit. 
where we're going to leave that there. And if there's no path name, we're not going to make any assumptions. We're just going to return. OK, let's see what this does. Oh, whoops, I got to make that a sync. Whoops, got to get rid of all enable page links references. And then try it again. Now the event. Hey, look at that. We're not getting that error anymore. And actually, it, it's loading the pages a lot faster. That's great. OK. So yeah, so now we've transferred our files over to PHP. We've also improved the page loader so that it doesn't hang the browser as much anymore and slow it down. In the next video, we're going to finally begin working with the database. And because I'm using XAMPP, it's going to be MySQL. And the first thing we're going to do is set up our tables for our database. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know there wasn't a whole lot to it, but uh, actually before I close out, I want to briefly explain the autoloader for those of you who don't understand the way it works. This is used to auto load PHP code so that you don't have to use uh, where's the index file so that you don't have to use these include and require statements everywhere in your code all you have to use are the namespaces like I showed it before use vendor name product name and then class name and the way this works is we set a prefix and then for every class or every piece of code we have we then add the namespace with the beginning of this prefix and the way this works is if we let's say we had a uh, folder called utilities and our test class was in there then we would call this utilities and it work like that so we have a prefix and then we have a base directory where we get the current directory that the autoloader file is in and then we have a source folder that all of our PHP code or like rather the core PHP functionality lives under. We get the length of the prefix and then we say, hey, does the class name have the prefix in it? That is this namespace prefix. Because whenever you use the class in your code, it's going to have this name pre this namespace prefix in it. If it doesn't return, we, we don't want to require it. If it does though, we're going to get the relative position of the class name, meaning uh, we're going to remove the namespace prefix from the, na uh, from the beginning of the class. Let me make that more specific. So we remove the namespace prefix from the class name. We then combine the class name with the base directory, changing these forward slashes, or sorry, changing these backward slashes into forward slashes, because that's how uh, Linux directory traversal works. It uses forward slashes combine it with a PHP extension then we check does this class file does this PHP file exist if it does require the file that's that's essentially how the autoloader works and it allows you to use more of a kinda of what I call like a Java C sharp kind of existence where you just use what you need and don't have to include everything at once so it's pretty good that's it for this episode, guys. As I said, we're going to actually be trying to build out our database structure in the next video with MySQL. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.